With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit. comes your way every Wednesday. Every Wednesday is at, at 8 p.m. UK time. Um, this is New Art Christian Ministries and we are broadcasting live uh, from United Kingdom, Ambassador in the United Kingdom. Just if this is your first time of joining us, hallelujah. Uh, quickly before we go into today's, um, into today's session, uh, I just uh, quickly want to mention um, our announcement just to let you know what we do in this church um, every every week hallelujah hallelujah praise God um on the Wednesday like this as we are doing today we come with uh, our Bible study program time with God and on Friday we also have our online weekly prayer meeting which we call prayer changes things at 8 p.m. on this platform but on Sundays, on Sundays is our Sunday devotional service. Both our Wednesdays and the Friday program, we do those two online. So you can join us on this platform. But our Sunday devotional service, uh, we do that one and on the, um, online as well at our worship center in Landing in Barcelona. You can get our location at uh, the location of our address at our website at www.newheartchristianministries.org The Lord bless you as you join us on any of these services in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank the Lord for another grace accorded us to bring this program to your doorstep and I know you are going to be blessed mightily through this teaching uh, today in Jesus' name. Psalm 119 verses 1 to 2 says that Blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the Lord. Hear that. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, ordinances, who seek him with their whole heart. As we are here to seek the Lord through the teaching of his word, may he be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. We will now invite our sister in the Lord to lead us in worship and at the end of that, we move on to today's teaching. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord, praise Glory the Lord, be. praise Jesus. Glory be to the Lord, Glory be, Glory be to the Lord, King, the King is coming 
in glory and in majesty every eye every eye shall see the king thy tomb is empty he died for me and rose again every eye every eye shall see the king the tomb is empty he died for me and rose again every eye every eye shall see the king thank you holy spirit thank you almighty father in jesus mighty name we have worshiped good evening my brothers and sisters wherever or any part of the world you are watching this program you are welcome to this platform tonight night of teaching enlightenment in the word of god we love you but jesus loves you more we are all family of god in christ jesus before we dive into the topic of tonight please quickly visit our youtube channel subscribe watch our past videos like them so we know you have um, visited also please keep sharing today's program with your friends and family it is loaded it is fully packed with a lot of information about the end time signs rapture and recently fulfill prophecies and what we need to do as believers as christ is nearly here please if you are here to be enlisted into the military school of the almighty god this is the minute this is the second and this is the hour for you to do so once again you are welcome into the kingdom of our god the family of our god irrespective of your race whether you are black white mixed race other religions you are all warmly welcome to our wednesday bible study it is interactive as questions can be asked it can be posted at the bottom of this video trust me one thing i want you to know tonight is you will have nothing to lose at the end of this teaching at least a part of this teaching will either encourage you lift you up or draw you closer to your maker the god almighty so shall it be for you tonight in the powerful name of jesus so therefore before we jump right into this interesting topic of tonight let us give honor unto whom honor is due god the creator of the whole universe invisible immortal the i am that i am the only one of israel the sustainer of our lives giver of all things god of signs and wonders god of reconciliation who reconciles us back to him through his only begotten son our lord jesus christ whose second coming we will be digging deep into tonight by the grace of god so therefore have your way take absolute control because without you in this program and even in our lives we are nothing we are nobody so therefore fill us afresh with your wisdom with your knowledge with understanding in the powerful name of jesus we welcome god the father god the son god the holy spirit the holy trinity three persons in one god we give you all the glory all honor all adoration we pray your word will transform and generate lives tonight it will be an eye opener to us all we will not only be the hearers of it but doers we pray every unsaved souls or lost sheep of israel listening to the message of tonight will receive salvation and the steps of the lost sheep shall be retraced back to you through your word in the powerful name of jesus we pray that you will count us worthy in your kingdom in heaven we pray we shall not miss heaven oh lord tonight we also counter any power as sign against the program of tonight we bind we bind them and we cast them out by fire in the mighty name of jesus any power of darkness operating in the air in the firmament from the coven of darkness from the water or from the sea coast anywhere they might be from land we destroy your evil activities over every single soul watching this program or that we watch later we render your power null and void over us in the powerful name of jesus at the end let's have a focus to glorify your holy name even in the powerful name of jesus 
thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you, Jesus. First and foremost, I give all the glory to God Almighty once again for granting me the opportunity to teach tonight. It is not by knowing how to do it, but it is His grace, a gift of God, according to what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, not of ourselves at all. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So God saved us by his grace when we believe. And we cannot take credit for this at all. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. So it is by grace I am standing before you to teach his undiluted word. Hallelujah, somebody. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So tonight, we are going to be teaching one of the controversial topics in the Bible, which is end time signs, rapture, and um, we would also mention end time predictions, end time prophecies fulfilled recently, and um, we touch on souls winning because it's something to do with it and what we should do about it. Therefore, we are going to be using mainly the book of Matthew chapter 24 and a couple of um, scriptures to back up my points. Brethren, this teaching is informative, comprehensive, but unfortunately, I might not be able to cover every aspect in depth because I believe that you have either read it in the scripture, if you are Bible scholars, or you have heard it from various sources as well. But this is only to remind ourselves again of the end time events happening, which have happened, which is about to happen, and those ones that is really happening in our generation, and what we should do to prepare ourselves for the imminent coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it is close by than expected. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, background information. We all know that Adam, the first man, brought sin to this world through his disobedience to God by eating the forbidden fruit of knowledge of good and evil and in consequence transmitted his sin to his descendants in which we are all partakers to. So as a result of this, God needed to reconcile us back to him. So let's fast forward. So for God to achieve this, he needed someone he can trust to keep his commandments and obey his voice. So God chose Abraham and made a covenant with him and his seed. So it was through the seed of Abraham that all people on earth will be blessed, according to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. It says, In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed my voice. That promised blessing came through Jesus Christ as explained in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. It does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to your seed, who is Christ. In Galatians 4, 4 to 5, NLT, it says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. So Jesus was born as a Jew under the law. He fulfilled the Jewish law perfectly and died as a once-for-all sacrifice on behalf of all who will put their faith in him. So, therefore, family of God, my brothers and sisters, do you know that under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of Eva could cleanse people's bodies 
from ceremonial impurity. Now, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people. So that all who are called, so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under that first covenant. If you look at the book of Hebrews 9, chapter, chapter 9, verse 23 to 29 says, This is why the tabernacle and everything in it, which were copies of things in heaven, had to be purified by the blood of the animals. But the real things in heaven had to be purified with far better sacrifices than the blood of animals. For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. And he did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again. Like the high priest here on earth, who enters the most high place year after year with the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again. Ever since the world began, but now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many. He will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. My question tonight is, are we waiting for his coming, my brothers and sisters? This is the time for us to repent if we are yet to accept Jesus. We must repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now we are waiting for his coming. Jesus Christ has promised about end time signs. He prophesied. Jesus Christ prophesied about end time signs and what will precede his coming. These are the signs and the things we will be looking at tonight in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and other few scriptures as mentioned earlier on. First and foremost, what are the b biblical end time signs? End time signs, what does it even mean? They are the events that signifies or that talks about the signs of Christ's return. So my question is, are we living in the end times? I will say yes, because if you look at all the end time signs, rapture, prophecies, fulfilled, those to be fulfilled, and those ones that is even fulfilled, they are now unfolding before our very eyes in the past and even now. He is very close by. Let's look at end time predictions. My brethren, no matter how people predict the end time and rapture, no man on this planet can ever get it right. If Jesus, our Lord and personal Savior, doesn't know, except our Father in heaven, then nobody can guess right. There will always be predictions of the end of the world. Why am I saying this? It's because we have quite a number of people who have predicted the end time and rapture. Throughout Christian history, Believers have been speculating and setting specific dates for end times and rapture. For example, we have a radio preacher, Harold Camping by name. He declared that the present world would end in 2011. And in 1988, rapture of the saints was also predicted. Nothing happened in those years, and predictions went on and on and on. 
But all the predictions were wrong. Probably the book of Matthew 24 was not taken into consideration where it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And there shall the end come. So we must evangelize. That is what he's telling us. Even Jesus said to, to the Pharisee in Matthew 22, verse 29, he said, you do a, you are mistaken, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. This is what I will say to those people who are predicting it. The Bible also stated in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 to 44. It says, verse Matthew t- in chapter 24, 36 to 39. But of that day, we are talking about nobody knows the day. God, Jesus Christ, we arrive, we come back. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also with the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know, until the flood came and took them all away so also with the coming of the Son of Man be. So, let's mention and discuss the end time signs mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. I will do it verse by verse, so we can draw our attention to those fulfilled, about to be fulfilled, and those that will be fulfilled soon, and those that is already fulfilling as well. In the Oliver Discourse, Given by Jesus on the Mount of Olives in Matthew 24, Jesus' disciples asked him about signs of his coming, and he responded by speaking of bad pains that will precede his coming. We all know what we mean by bad pain. Bad pain of a woman that is giving birth. It means we all know how painful it is. It is the pain during labor and delivery and it is caused by contractions of the muscles of the uterus and by pressure on the cervix so this pain can be felt as strong cramping in the abdomen in the groin as well as aching feeling so the pain is described as the several terrible and pain- painful kinds of events like um, strife famine pestilence earthquake that will happen so what is Oliver Discourse mentioned above? According to biblical Christianity, the Oliver Discourse is a sermon that Jesus preached from the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem, three days before his crucifixion. The Oliver Discourse is recorded in the Synoptic Gospels, but its most complete form is in the book of Matthew. That is why I'm dealing with Matthew. So... The complete form of it is in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 to 25, and in more abbreviated forms in Mark 13 and Luke 21. So in Mark 24, we are going to be doing it verse by verse so that we can understand it to find out what is really going on, what is happening in the world we are in today. Then Jesus, the verse 1 says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown away. Here, what is Jesus saying? Jesus predicted the destruction of the temple and this prophecy was fulfilled. If you read Matthew 23, Verse 31 and 32, it says, On the Tuesday before his crucifixion, our Lord went into the temple and denounced his inhabitants as being the sons of those who murdered the prophets. He called them a brood of vipers and those destined for the condemnation of hell. He ends this rebuke with these words. He said, 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones. To her. How often I wanted to gather your children together. Jerusalem, the ruins of that beautiful temple is. Till there to today. Verse 4. What does it say? It says, Take heed that no one deceives you. Don't let anyone mislead you, because many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, Messiah, and we deceive many. F to be honest with you, here we have seen false prophets, they are everywhere, all over the place. To be honest with you, we have Jewish Messiah, we have Christian Messiah, we have Muslim Messiah, we have the one that is called Zoroastrian Messiah, Combination Messiah, and other Messiah claimants. In Africa, we have Jesus of Oyibo in Muslim. We have Azan Mezaki. He claimed to be Isa himself after his imprisonment. We also know of a pastor giving his congregation petrol to drink and another eating snakes. You can imagine what this world is turning to. In the Wikipedia, in addition to that, we have a list of those who claim to be Jesus. For instance, in the 18th century, there were only two who claimed to be Jesus. In the 19th century, it went up to seven. In the 10th, 20th and 31st century in our life, we have 36 people that claimed to be Jesus. Among them are Yuson Youngmoon, Jim Jones, Charles Manson, David Koresh, and so on. They all claim to be Jesus, you can imagine. So a lot of people have been deceived because they do not study the word of God. A lot of people have spent their last penny on the false prophets for help, but all to no avail. My brothers and sisters, learn to study the word. Meditate so you can hear from God by yourself. He will speak to you. Stop seeking help where you cannot get one. Some of them will sleep with you, especially women. And they will add to your problems. They will compound it. Take all your money. They will take all your money and mess up your life. I pray that your life will not be messed up in the mighty name of Jesus. But we have to learn from those who have made mistakes in the past and use it to rebuild our own lives. Stop falling and rising. Begin to eat meat and not being fed with meat. Wake up. Be matured. Think before you leap. Not the other way around. Jesus is enough. If you know him fully well, you will know that he is so sufficient. The next one we'll be talking about of the end time sign is you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. What is Jesus Christ, our Lord, saying here? He's saying that we are going to hear the wars and the rumors of war. We have heard of cases where we heard about rumors of wars. So, presently, we have over 851 conflicts in seven countries all over the world. So, this is part of it. The next one is for the nation we rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. It is happening right now. It has happened in the past. It's still happening. For instance, look at Iran and, and Kuwait. United Nations invaded Libya. 
the one that is happening right now that is hot, Russia and Ukraine and many other nations that have fought against one another. This prophecy was fulfilled and it is still ongoing because it is part of end time sign until Jesus come, it will be. We pray we shall not be victims of war in Jesus' name. The next one is there will be famine. Famines in 2019, we have 885, 800 and it's 851 million, million people, they have food insecure. We have 800, we can imagine. We have 800 and 851 million people. They have food insecure. And over 159 million are starving right now. My brothers and sisters, we go to supermarkets. We all know what is going on. Go to supermarkets. You will be surprised as to our prices or some household items have gone up times two times three. It's really so bad. It's only God that will help us. We all know what it means. What about pestilences? We can also conclude that the last pandemic, COVID-19, is part of the end time sign as predicted in the word of God. There is earthquake in various places too. According to the National Earthquake Information Center, they now locate about 20,000 earthquakes around the globe each year or approximately 55 per day. That means earthquakes is everywhere. It's still happening every day in some parts of the world. So, and Jesus Christ said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. We move on to the next one. It says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation, persecution, and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. To be honest with us, <laughs> the top five countries in the world that persecute Christians are according to open doors are Afghanistan, North Korea, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan. Why? Because we preached Christ crucified. We evangelize to save the world, to save the lost sheep of Israel and the unsaved souls. You can imagine when we go out for evangelism, what we face, what happened. Some people do not just like us at all because of that name Jesus we preached. It was gathered that 249 million Christians around the world suffer from high level of persecution. Yes, that is one in nine Christians. We have not even seen anything at all. It is going to get worse. It is prophecy. It is not me. May God help us in Jesus' name. The next one sign that we are going to be seeing is um, then many will be offended. They will betray one another. And we hate one another. It is happening, my brothers and sisters, brethren in the Lord, in Christ. They are fighting one another. Hmm. There is confusion in the society. People have already stopped believing God. They don't want to trust each other anymore. There are so many Christians, children of God, who are falling from grace. They are living the Christian faith. <laughs> it has started. Is happening. You can Google it to confirm what I'm saying. I can't believe this is fulfilled in our days. Please go and Google. Go to YouTube. You will see a lot of falling away. Children of God. Some of them, the reasons they are giving, <laughs> in fact, doesn't worth it. Some of them, they complain about the attitude of their pastors. Some complain they are not recognized in the church. Some of them complain of little, little things that that shouldn't take them away from God. They come out to say it boldly on social media, on YouTube. <coughs> I don't understand. Yes, I could understand where they might be coming from. Sometimes 
you might regret going or attending a church but that doesn't mean you can go that doesn't mean you cannot go elsewhere and worship your god and start serving your god if you are a genuine child of god if you are fed up in a church you don't want to go there anymore it shouldn't stop you from serving your god you can change church the next one another one is then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many i think i've touched on that earlier on a little bit the bible says in jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 then the lord said to me the prophets are prophesying lies in my name i have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them they are prophesying to you false visions divinations idolatries and the delusions of their own mind it says in jeremiah 23 16 do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you they fill they fill you with false hopes they speak visions from their own mind not from the mouth of the lord so my brothers and sisters false teachers they are everywhere they will say they are giving God's messages, but they will only teach their own ideas because they want to make themselves important. Brethren, be warned. The next one we'll be talking about is because lawlessness will abound. That is Matthew 24, verse 12. That is where we are. It, it simply means sin will be rampant everywhere things such as sexual immorality is everywhere gluttony that that means overeating greed slot rot envy pride unforgiveness and so on please read deadly sins in the book of proverbs chapter 6 16 to 19 and the bible also said the love of many will grow cold i've touched a little bit on that agape love will drop to zero that means love of many will grow cold. People do not want to serve God anymore. Many people will love God less and less and less and less. They will see all the evil things hmm, that is happening in the world. In the world, And people do not want to change. Holy Spirit, we pray that we will not disappoint you. We will not fail you. We will not fall away. Your love will not grow cold in us, even in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that all these things will not happen to us. It won't be our portion. Anything that will take us away from you, we cancel it in the powerful name of Jesus. The Bible says, in continuation to Matthew 24, I'm on 13 now. Verse 13 says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. My brothers and sisters, my brethren in the Lord, how can we endure to the end? Number one, we need to be studying the word of God regularly. It will teach you patience and endurance. God will say on that day, welcome to people when they enter where he rose but those people must believe in him until the end of their lives revelation 2 verse 10 to the end may also mean until god has finished his work here on earth do we know that some people will still be alive when jesus returns god help us in jesus name um verse 14 says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come <laughs> despite all this we are still reaching out to souls <laughs> despite all this we are still reaching out to souls Some approach you, they will ask you questions, you will respond, you will answer. People want to 
come to Christ. They don't want to go to hellfire. And um, we are not stopping in preaching the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are changing lives through evangelism. A lot of people now go online to subscribe to YouTube channels of different churches. They get converted through social media and all of that. It's because they don't want to miss it. They don't want to end their life in hellfire. So this verse takes us to soul winning. Because this verse 14 is very important to the end time. And this gospel of the gospel we preached, we be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So let's say, let's quickly go into evangelism, which is very paramount. It's very important to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because according to what we just read in that in particular verse, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached. That means if it's not preached, <laughs> the hand will not come. So, what is evangelism? It is the act of winning souls for Christ by saving unsaved souls. God commanded it. It is a great commission. It is the heartbeat of God. So, why do we have to evangelize? Why is Jesus Christ, why did he mention it? The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, 15 to 16, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. The reason why we have to evangelize. We evangelize to bring souls to Christ. We do it. To rescue sinners from God's judgment and his wrath. So, whether you are called to do it or not, it is a must for us all, the children of God. Let's do it together according to the word of God. Because if you look at the world today, thousands, millions are dying every day without knowing Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, how many souls have you won? In your lifetime. Have you touched a life today? Through evangelism? Have you spoken to your non-Christian friends? About Christ? What about your colleagues at work? What about your family? Who are yet to know Christ? Have you tried. To tell them the good news of Jesus? By not doing all of this. Do you know it is delaying? the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God does not want anyone to perish, but to repent and come to his saving grace. In the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. So how will you be rewarded in heaven, my brothers and sisters, if you don't do it? Have you been doing it? And you just feel tired. You feel discouraged due to insults. Do not be discouraged. Be strengthened. Please, my brothers and sisters, this is the end of the age. Let's keep preaching the gospel until the bridegroom appears to take us bride home. Heaven, our final destination. It is a place of peace, a place of rest from all the troubles of this world. Everything we have been we have been through in this world. Heaven is our home. Let's quickly talk about the great tribulations. It's part of what we are talking about. How is it going to be? Do you know that the great tribulation is coming if you don't know? What is great tribulation? This is the period in which people are speculating that we are about to experience it. This is a time when you will see the abomination of desolation. I personally believe that we shall we should be taken away before the day. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. It says, whoever reads, let him understand. 
here there will be an antichrist, a global world leader that will appear to be a dictator according to the scripture. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. I hope you have turned with me to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. That is where I'm reading from now. He will even sit in the temple of God in Jerusalem, claiming that he himself is God, demanding he should be worshipped, which means the temple will be rebuilt to honor the Antichrist. Can you imagine? So he will be worshipped as a Messiah. And any eyes, many eyes, you heard that. <laughs> and many eyes will be opened when it breaks the covenant of peace that Daniel talks about. It will break the covenant of peace halfway into seven-year deal. And the eyes of the Jews will now be opened that he is nothing but a false Messiah. We pray he will not be here when he arrives. We must have been raptured before he takes over the earth, even in Jesus' name. So, the next one, in continuation of the Matthew 24, we just finish um, um, verse 15. The next one of the end time that Jesus Christ spoke about is 16. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the house top not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe! to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or in Sabbath day, for then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elects, for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So I've succeeded in reading and the, um, about the great tribulation from Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 to 13, verse, verse 14 to 25. That is what he's talking about. Then let's quickly move on to verse 29. That is what we are talking about here, about um, the end time, what is going to happen. Now verse 29, verse 29 of Matthew 24 says, The coming of the Son of Man immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the signs of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory verse 31 says and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four corners of the world from one end of heaven to the other praise the lord my brothers and sisters, all these, <laughs> all these warnings, they are wake up calls for us, because the Old Testament gave over three hundred prophecies, and Jesus fulfilled them all. So this one definitely, whether we like it or not, it is going to be fulfilled. Just like we are going to talk about the rapture prophecy as well, which was mentioned. We find it in the book of Matthew two, Matthew twenty four as well from 40 to 44 turn with me to the book of uh, matthew 24 40 to 44 we are still reading on then two men will be in the field one will be taken and the other left two women will be grind will be grinding at the mill one will be taken and the other left watch therefore for you do not know what hour your lord is coming but know this that if the master of the house had known that, had known what hour the thief will come, the thief will come 
he would have washed and not allow his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So, what are the end time signs and prophecies fulfilled? What are we seeing happening today, right now? I'm going to tell us the latest end time signs and prophecies fulfilled. You will be surprised that what has been spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the prophets of old, they are now unfolding in our very eyes. The first one is Jewish Messiah. He has appeared. He is here. He's been celebrated. I watched it on YouTube. Go and do the same thing. He was performing miracle. It's called the Yanoka uh, Rav Shalomo Yeranda right now. It is a fresh news, my brothers and sisters. We don't know whether it's speculation, but that is what I saw. I saw it with my eyes. Go and check it. I'm not making it up. Then they also talk about um, AFA is also found. Remember that sacrificial system will be back in the millennium. This is for the Jewish and will be needed in their new uh, temple. This animal has been found as a, as, um, as a prophecy fulfilled. I'm not going to talk too much about that one because at the moment it's only Jesus Christ we believe in. Then the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 talk about the knowledge that will be increased. That is a prophecy as well about the end time, the sign of end time. It says... But you, Daniel, open the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Yes, it is happening. Now, look at technology today. <laughs> Where the wisdom comes from, <laughs> I do not know. Look at technology advancements. Let us look at transport systems like buses, like cars, electric cars, planes, jets, trams, trains, without driver. <laughs> hmm. People are going into space. People are going into moon. Look at computers. Look at smartphones where people, they communicate with one another via earphone. They were chatting on trains. People will be chatting on their phone, on the bus. Hmm. Do we know that during the biblical era, people, they walk miles, they use donkeys. And even years back, people walk. So now, today, what do we have? We have technology advancements. Technology is moving fast. Even <laughs> Bible, Bible verses, I mean, Bible versions, it's everywhere. You can be at home. You can be in the toilet, you can be in the garden, you can be listening to scriptures because of those who have spent time studying the word, putting them together for our understanding. They are in different versions and they are really helping us a lot. For instance, in the past, you have to wait to go to church on Sunday before you can hear the word of God. But technology has transformed everything. My brothers and sisters, everything we... I believe you can bear me witness to what I'm saying as well. You can hear the word of God on social media, such as on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so on and so forth. That is part of increase in knowledge. So the scripture is being fulfilled in our days. But Christians are reading the Bible as a story book. It is a prophetic book. We must read with understanding and watch out for its fulfillment which is even unfolding before our very own eyes. In the book of um, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, we also learned about men shall be lover of selves. They shall love themselves more than God. It says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be, um, there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing as God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be 
unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no control. They will have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. It is happening. It is happening right now. It is happening on social media. We can see people boasting, <laughs> bragging, exerting themselves on social media. Showing people what they have. Showing how much money they have. Showing their body. They show the type of car they have. They are showing their beautiful homes. They are abusing and condemning one another. We are not saying social media is wrong. But let us use it wisely. Not to attack, not to criticize, or to destroy others. Satan too was exalting himself. The reason it was cast down from heaven. Ezekiel 35, 13 to, 13 to, I mean 12 to 13. Also Nebuchadnezzar, Herod, and so on and so forth. So my brothers and sisters, be humbled. Be humble instead. So, our world is bombarded with consequences of sin. Everywhere we turn, we see the effects of a fallen world and many who live without hope, someone must share hope with them. Jesus said, it's up to us to do that. So we need to go on mission trips. We need to don donate school keys to Bible schools. Let us uh, support missionaries. Let us share the good news of salvation, of forgiveness, and of grace. And if we do it, we do it wrong. God can use it. Others feel confident in sharing the good news, but they don't know how to inspire others to do the same. It's time for that to change. We can share our faith as we go about our daily lives. We can go to places like our offices, grocery stores. We can go to different places in the markets, ball fields, everywhere. We can change the world with good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us read our Bible regularly, especially the books of Daniel and Revelation that mostly talks about the end times, not for any other thing, but to remind us of his coming and then um, to get us getting ready and preparing for his coming. Let us live like Jesus. Let us talk like Jesus. Let us change lives and save souls like Jesus. Let us act like him. Let us be the Bible that the world is. Let us have good manners and good attitudes. But as mentioned earlier, God wants against unforgiveness, wrath, sexual immorality, pride, gossip, backbiting. All these are demonic and evil spirits. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lordness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, let us learn from Abraham, David, Samuel, Daniel, Deborah, Queen of Sheba, that even Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, mentioned about in the New Testament, and a host of others. Now, another interesting thing I want to talk about tonight is the Euphrates River. I don't know if you have heard about it. The book of Revelation reveals the future. That is, the events that will take place in future. Six of the seven trumpets, River Euphrates, has been fulfilled now. I don't know whether you have heard about it. Have you heard of late that um, River Euphrates has dried up? The Bible foretold its dryness in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 12. It says, and the sixth angel pour out his fire, that means his bow, upon the great river Euphrates, 
and the water thereof was dried up, and that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The question is, what is the way of the kings of the east? Who are they talking about? Who are they referring to in the scripture I, I just read? The kings of the east, they are the kings of the heaven, father and son. They are called kings of the east because that is the direction from which heavenly hosts will touch down to heads. Shariba, kuriba, sariba, shariba. I want us to note the following. Jesus' second coming will be from the east. You need to know that. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, verse 27. God's glory comes from the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 2. Revelation sealing angel comes from the east. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Revelation chapter 7, verse 2. So, river Euphrates is the river that flew out of the Garden of Eden. It was prophesied in the Revelation that it will dry up, and this is happening before our own very eyes. Go and Google it for confirmation. Please, once again, to those who are yet to accept Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, do you still believe that this world is coming to an end any time from now? Hmm. Unfortunately, we do not know the hour the minute or second not even jesus no except our father who is in heaven we don't know so therefore my brothers and sisters everything is set in heaven we are only waiting for the trumpet to blow what are you waiting for start evangelizing continue praying above all read the bible by yourself and stop running around for help no help anywhere except in the Lord Jesus. Only the name of Jesus will save you on that day. False prophets, they are just taking your money. They cannot save you. Start learning to eat the word of God and digest it before the trumpet sounds. Idols cannot save you. Do you know what the Bible says about idolatry? In Exodus 20, in fact, God is angry with the wicked and idol worshippers every day. Wrath of God, anger of God is coming upon the temple and shrine of the idolaters. Don't be part of it. Some are even saying that God is not loving. If he is loving, he wouldn't kill. There will be no disaster. He wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do that. Hmm. People who are saying anything of such, I will call them copycats. It's because they had people saying that without realizing or knowing why they are saying so they just follow suit they follow suit i will conclude they don't read the bible they don't know god's commandments they don't even know god's standard if they do they will know that god is lovely he is loving and he is merciful so in conclusion let us quickly look at statistical figures of end time signs and prophecies fulfilled According to Lifeway Research, Dare Buck is a New Testament study professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. Noted that the Bible has several lists of potential signs of Jesus' return, like the Oliver discourse I mentioned above in the book of Matthew we just discussed now. In the study, that was sponsored by a group of ministries led by chosen people and conducted in early 20s. Liveway Research asks pastors if they consider certain current events to be included in Jesus' warnings. So, at least three in four pastors agree that Jesus was referring to current events, including the rise of false prophets and false teachers. And they said it's 83%. They said the love of many believers that is growing cold 
What is the percentage given to it? They said it's 81%, which is sad indeed. Let us look at the traditional moral becoming less accepted. They said that one is 79%. What about wars and national conflicts? They said it's 78%. They talk about earthquakes and other natural disasters. They say 76%. And people abandoning their Christian faith. This, that is the falling away. That is 75%. It is sad. Clear majorities also see famines. 70%. And anti-Semitism towards um, Jewish people worldwide. 63%. A sign of Jesus' return. What are the other signs they also talk about statistically? Pastors are also likely to see several events related to Israel and the Jewish people as fulfillment of biblical prophecy and signs of the end times. They said seven in ten evangelical or black Protestant pastors, which is 70%, say, the modern rebirth of the state of Israel and the regathering of millions of Jewish people were fulfilled. They were fulfillments of prophecies in the Bible. And they say similar numbers is 69% say those events show Christ's return is closer. Around two in five pastors which they said is 39%, agreed that the establishment of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is a sign of the end times. Then, most 62% believe another temple will be built in Jerusalem in accordance with a prophecy in Ezekiel 44-48. to 48. The third, to be honest with us, this is another thing I will chip in. I think I mentioned it earlier on, the third temple is now underway as we speak. So many make end times connection to Israel, specifically Jerusalem, in part because 73% believe that Christ will return and reign in Jerusalem in the fulfillment of God's promises to David. So more than half of pastors, which they rate as 57%, 57% believe the Bible teaches that one day most or all Jewish people alive will believe in Jesus. Close to 3 in 5 says, which is 5, 59% says Jesus will return when the Jewish people accept Jesus Christ. In addition, nearly all pastors 98% of pastors says believe that sharing the gospel with Jewish people is very important. Among those who believe Jewish evangelism is vital, they give a variety of reasons why. More than 99% say it is important to share the gospel with all people groups. 9 in 10 pastors which is 89% say because Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Did we hear that? More than 4 in 5, which is 82%, believe Jewish people are special in God's sight. Let us see what Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 to 7 says. It says, For you are a people only to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasure possession. Out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth, it was not because we were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. So, they said around two-thirds of pastors, which is 67% say, sharing the gospel with Jewish people is important because Apostle Paul's pattern was to evangelize Jewish people first. More than a quarter of 28% says Jewish evangelism will speed up the return of Christ. We don't know how far it is true. We don't know whether that one is speculation or... Well, 
they said 20, 28%. That is what they said. So, sharing gospel with Jews. Let us not forget to share our faith with Jews. If we know of one, let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray for the salvation of the Jews. So, so that they can believe Jesus as their Messiah. Let's continue to pray for their salvation. Because some are saved, but God wanted all of them to be saved. Psalm 121 verse um, 6. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do we know that the Jews... The Jews, they have a priority over the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles because Paul evangelized Jews first when he brought the gospel to a new place. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared that it was necessary that we first preach the word of God to Jews. But since you have rejected it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, we will offer it to the Gentiles, the reason why they turn to us. So, to those who are here to surrender their lives to Christ, both Jews and Gentiles, repent today for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible says, He who hears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying tonight. May the Lord help us to be preparing for His coming. He said, We should watch and pray. We should occupy until it comes. I believe this message will change your life in the powerful name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit of the living God, you are spoken immensely to us about your second coming, the events, signs of the end time, the rapture and prophecy that has just been fulfilled, river Ufrites and others. Father, all we need is to keep your commandments, help us to obey your voice, give us the grace to save souls, help us to be ready for your coming by studying your word in season and out of season. Help us to watch and pray, help us to live holy and righteous life all the days of our lives. Help us to take on board good Christian living that will enable us to make it to heaven. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall all be with the Lord forever, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you for watching. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Uh, we thank our sister in the Lord for that wonderful teaching. May the Lord continue to strengthen you um, it's a very long one, but we really enjoyed it. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, we thank our sisters in the Lord who joined us on this program. Sister Anne Mary, um, may the Lord bless you, ma'am. And uh, Sister Funke, we thank you for joining us on this uh, program. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's been wonderful uh, having you around on this program. Praise God. Uh, Sister Funke of the Happy Hearts. And then... Um, Sister Anne Mary B. C. Smith, may the Lord bless both of you in the name of Jesus and all other girls that we uh, can't see on this particular program. We thank you so much. Um, to cap everything all, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36, it says that, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Okay, it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be... We don't know. I don't know. Uh, Sister B.C. and Mary Smith, he doesn't know. Sister Funke doesn't know. 
uh, our teacher doesn't know. I, I don't know either. Nobody can say this is the time. And very surprising when you hear people, when you hear people um, uh, saying, oh, um, the end of the world is coming on so, so, so time. Nobody, nobody can say uh, this is the time the end of the world will be coming. Praise God. So let us just prepare. If you are doing bad things, just change your way and the Lord will bless you. If you know you are doing something that is not right, um, just change your way. Hallelujah. Our sister titled that message. Uh, what, 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 what's that? Your title of that End message? Time signs recently fulfilled prophecies and evangelism and what we need to do. What we need to do? What do you say we should do, ma'am? Evangelizing. Evangelizing. I preach the word of God. I the word of God huh? And moving closer to God, loving God. Telling about and be born again. Be born, born again. Jesus. Very important. Very important. Very important. Don't 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 draw back. Don't draw back. Just continue the work you are doing, and the Lord will bless you as you do so. Now, thanks so much for joining us. We are back on Friday for our Friday our Friday prayer meetings, which we call um, prayer changes things. Okay, may the Lord bless you as you join us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, then please remain blessed. Praise God. With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit.